The concept of cosmetic surgery resulted from his work as a military doctor during the First World War. His main desire was to help soldiers with severe face injuries so they could have a chance to lead a somewhat normal life. However, his innovative techniques shaped the future of modern plastic surgery. Welcome to Personality Matters, I am Arthur Kems and today we will be talking about Harold Gillis. The First World War introduced a mechanized form of warfare that led to severe injuries among soldiers. New weapons like heavy artillery, machine guns and poison gas caused more severe and widespread injuries than ever before. The culprits for many of these facial and head injuries were shells filled with shrapnel. These shells were designed to cause maximum damage, with hot metal tearing through flesh, creating twisted, ragged wounds and sometimes even ripping faces off completely. The nature of these injuries during the war was unprecedented and posed serious challenges for medical treatment. Healing facial injuries in wartime was tough. Surgeons often stitched wounds without taking into account lost flesh. It resulted in scars that tightened as they healed, transforming faces into a grimace. Jaw injuries created additional challenges, making it difficult for the patients to eat and drink. Some had to be carefully nursed in a sitting position to prevent suffocation when lying down. For others, injuries led to blindness and left gaps where noses once were. Harold Gillis was a New Zealand native, but during the war served in the British Army. Being a surgeon, he observed efforts to fix facial injuries on the front line. Eventually, it led him to recognize the necessity for specialized treatment. Upon coming back to England, Gillis persuaded the army's top surgeon to create a special ward for facial injuries. In June 1917, Gillis opened Queen's Hospital in London suburb that provided about 1,000 beds for patients who needed facial reconstruction. The patients came there with significant psychological trauma, so there were no mirrors inside the building. It's important to understand that plastic surgery was at its early stages back then. What Harold Gillis and his colleagues did was truly pioneering work. It demanded them to reconstruct a soldier's face while considering functional aspects like eating and speaking difficulties. But they also needed to consider aesthetics to restore the injured face to the extent it would be socially acceptable by the standards of the day. Gillis invented various techniques through trial and error. One key method he developed was tube pedicle skin grafting. To put it simply, a section of skin was partially separated but not detached from a healthy part of the soldier's body, shaped into a tube and stitched onto the the injured area. Time was crucial to allow a new blood supply to form at the implantation site. In other words, the graft needed time to take root in the raw flesh. Afterwards, the tube was detached and opened, and the flat skin was stitched over the area that needed cover. The tube pedicle method was indeed revolutionary, because it solved the problem of infection thanks to continued blood flow. One of the first patients treated by Gillis was a warship sailor, Walter Eo. During the Battle of Jutland in 1916, he suffered facial injuries, losing both upper and lower eyelids. Using the tube pedicle technique, Gillis managed to create a mask of skin across Walter's face and eyes, forming new eyelids. The results were not perfect. But Gillis restored Walter's facial features, giving him a face once again. Later, he applied similar procedure to thousands of other patients. Gillis formed a diverse team of specialists that included surgeons, nurses and artists to support his patients. Sculptors crafted representations of the appearance of the injured men before their injuries. Even after the conclusion of the First World War in 1918, the efforts within Queen's Hospital persisted for several years. The hospital conducted over 11,000 surgeries on more than 5,000 men until 1925. Gillis and his colleagues may not have fully restored their patients' original appearances, but they gave them a chance to lead a somewhat normal life. Basically, Harold Gillis laid the foundation for modern plastic surgery. His work and effort contributed to the medical field and helped countless individuals. Thank you for watching Personality Matters. We talk about people who made the world. Until next time, I am Arthur Kemps.